Okay, thank you everybody for waiting. Uh, just to set up the live stream, so you're now going around the world. This is great. Welcome everybody to the last preliminary round. This is APC. Um, if we have it gives me a great pleasure to invite the first speaker to start. Um, for your time signals, I'll just give you a clap when you have one minute left, and then two claps when it's gone. And I will try to give you a countdown, but it may not always be accurate. Okay, because I'm also taking notes. Um, <coughs> Migrants need protection, and for that reason today we have the means to give them protection. And today the proposition B wants th that all states to give Im to immediately ratify this international convention on the protection of the rights of all migrant workers and the members of their families. But before we do that, let's define the key terms of the motion. To ratify means to act in accordance with all the measures of that certain convention. And when we refer to this international convention, uh, we refer to the 1990 Convention done by the United Nations in order to protect the rights of these migrants because, as we said, they needed them. Actually, what exactly happens with this convention? This convention has been ratified by approximately 44 states in the world, but none of these uh, none of these 44 states were major receiving countries. Moreover, this we see that this convention comprises all the previous conventions into one, comprises all the measures that were done separately into one great instrument that has it all. For example, it comprises um, the Convention of 1949 and also the Convention of 94, uh, 1975, and these conventions were done by the ILO. Moreover, this convention gives the freedom and rights that they deserve, and they are meant, this convention is meant to eradicate their problems. And I shall explain you that on two main points. Firstly, why is this convention different from anything before it? And secondly, why this convention promotes international cooperation? But first, let's talk about why is this convention different from anything before. And I shall talk about it on, uh, on certain points. Firstly, talking about why it comprises them all. Well, we said that there were previous conventions and that these previous conventions have rights when they, were, they had this right separately. We're saying that this brings out all the, the rights into one instrument. We think that this is way more easier for the states to ratify because they take it all. And it's way more efficient and way more attractive for um, for these states to ratify because because it is uh, compressed. For example, um, until now it, it wasn't efficient because all of these problems that they still have is because of the fact that there were different instruments and it was quite difficult to ratify them all and to and to and to choose them. But now it is the same one, and this will will, uh, will make them less prone to the problems. Will, will give migrants um, more uh, more rights, more protection. Furthermore. Um, another point why it's different is the fact that it was made by the United Nations, and the fact that it was made by the United Nations gives it more and more credibility. The ILO it is not, it does not have, to have such credibility as the United Nations, and moreover, the fact that the United Nations decided to do that is the fact that they finally realized that something was wrong. They finally realized that they, they had to change something, and they did that. Moreover, let's talk about this committee that is going to, to exist. In this convention, uh, um, a means of, of the convention uh, reflects the fact that it's going to be a committee, a committee at the United Nations headquarters. And this committee will be comprised of 40 experts of high world standing, impartiality, and recognized competence. And the state parties will gonna have to choose one person from their own nationals, and they will be represented out there. They will be represented right at the UN. And what will happen? Reports will be given. Reports from the migrants, reports with what will happen to them within one year from entry and then every five years. And this, moreover, and this report will be available to the public. Why would this happen? We're saying that this is really, really good. And why? Because of the fact that they that these reports will not to reflect the problems, going to reflect what's going on, going to show them at the United Nations right there in the General Assembly the fact that this is happening, the fact that this is a reality, and the fact that they should act uh, according to it. It will be a great evaluation in making sure that this is going to happen. Moreover, we're going to have the insurance that we're going to solve this, and thus we will prevent any violations from happening again. Moreover, let's talk about why is this fundamental for all types of countries, because we're saying that once they have new migration policies at this very moment, we'll have a better enforcement. 
will resolve the gaps between the others and we're saying that it's going to help them. But this is going to help also the ones that do not have migration policies, the ones that have weak migration policies, because it will give them the opportunity from outside to help, give them the help to do that from, from the outside. Moreover, we're saying that this is going to, to, uh, to give the migrants greater information. Why? Because they're going to be informed of all rights that they have. They're going to be informed of their rights before leaving the state of origin. And this is exactly the, the, the greatest thing that we think that's going to happen. They will be given information into their language when arrested, race is well deported. And they will be given their right. And they will, be, they will know everything that is needed to know in order to solve it. it will be, this convention ensures the fact that they know no matter of their situation. And because of the fact that they will know, this is going to have the, at all states because um, because they will know. Because, for example, when, uh, when a migrant is being abusing their to you can go to the police and there will be somebody to make him understand and there will be somebody to help him. And what will happen? They, well, he will receive the right to compensation and moreover, and also we will give this report to the UN and it will be a global awareness. And because of the, this global awareness, we're saying that if all the states ratify, this awareness will be taken further. Now let's talk, talk about the second point first, the international cooperation. Moreover, we're saying that the states have different norms, the states have different policies, and because of the fact that they have different policies, we're saying that this is bad, and that's when the contradiction comes. That's when the, that's when, when the differences come, because of, there are differences of policies between the state of origin, the state of press, the state of employment, and these different instruments make them or worse and worse to protect the migrants. For example, a migrant that is protected in, in, his, in his state of origin, maybe he's protected in the state of trust, but when he goes to the state of employment, he's not protected there anymore. And we're saying that these differences are also going to hinder the process of, of, of protecting these migrants. But thus, if we do that, if, we, if all states ratify this convention, we're saying that there will be no more differences because they will all work under the same instrument, under the same thing. And this will be a greater cooperation between the states, between the migrants, and it will be a kind of a, um, information homogeneity because they will help the migrants together and for their protection. Thank you, everyone. Mm -hmm. One minute. Uh, is com comprised by the other convention. Yes. Well, 
But were these conventions successful? Any of them? Maybe they had maybe they had great measures, but they weren't ratified, they weren't accepted at the international level of And why would they be ratified this time? And this time would be ratified because it comprises the other measures. They can put all everything that they had in one convention. And and this and all the, will the implementation of the convention cost if we have crisis like in Ireland, in Greece, in Portugal, will it have a cost, the implementation of the convention? No, I think that no. The, there will be cost, of course, but this cost will be minimal well, to the protection we give to my So you show us that uh, by ratifying and by taking all the measures of the convention, there will be no cost, no big cost. Sir, I said that the costs are not important when we're talking about the protection of migrants. For the protection of migrants, we will take everything that we can order to do that. But we're saying that protecting the migrants doesn't have so much cost. In now, in uh, any state where migrants, where migrants live, don't they go to the police to report if they have faced uh, discrimination or discrimination? Actually, they may go to the police, but, uh, they, they want to, um, but the police does not give them the possibility to do that in their own language but the, but the comment, because of the fact that they have not you have no recourse on it because of the fact that they didn't ratify the convention. And do you know it was a native language? Native la maybe the native language will not help them. Maybe it does not mean the native language where it works, for example. Does it need, even if he works in another state, does not need to interact with people? How can he interact with people? Can he interact with people? But, but we're saying that if you don't give this, uh, this protection in his original language, it would be more important. Thank you. We need three minutes. First, I want to say, and I want to agree with, uh, with the only point that about the freedom of sad that migrants need protection. And why is that? Because migrants are around the world, and it's a huge number of migrants. But they live in different states, so they live in different uh, laws of the state. And we say that there is no need for a change of this status quo. And why is that? We don't need a new, uh, a new document that will correct what that will uh, 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 or regulate um, uh, this uh, the, the, the migration policy, and why is that? Because nation, uh, all the states have to uh, have to do the policies with uh, all migrants. What happened that these states did not uh, uh, 
uh, had the chance to do this till now. Because the migration process has been growing fast, and they couldn't have good instruments to, uh, to, uh, to control that. And there were many migrants coming there, and there were no, uh, uh, there were no preparation for that. And states uh, were, were like in that situation. What, what, will, what will the states need? For example, Canada are enforcing the laws for the migrants. Why? Because they have benefits of that. We have USA with the Dream Act. They are, we are, they are doing laws to protect, uh, to protect the, the migrants. Barack Obama has, has made this mission and is going through, through this mission. They are enforcing the borders because they, are not, they don't want to, 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 uh, to have more migrants. Because they want to control them in the, the number of things they have there and they want to provide the rights of them they have there because they don't need more. That's why we call to control the borders that you don't have need migrants and to enforce the laws you have actually in the states because there is no need for a UN document that will fail and I will give you the reason why this convention will fail. The first, uh, uh, the UN convention uh, actually, uh, the, the other, the cost UN Convention actually uh, failed in, in many states of the world. We have the Human Rights de de Declaration, which uh, in some states of the world is not respected. Let me mention the Iran. Uh, is Iran respecting the human rights of its own people? It's not. How will this uh, UN document uh, protect the rights of migrants on, the, on, on, on there? They're not the natives. How will this protect these people? So this is, uh, we have the other UN conventions like Convention uh, uh, for Protecting the Rights of Women and, and uh, the Child. But they didn't work in some, in some states because there are some violations. There are violations of rights for some people. That's why the UN cannot control this UN document in all states because the states don't want uh, someone to be to to be uh, up and, and to, to lose some sovereignty on on making own policies. And what will happen? The UN Convention conflicts with the policies of, of the states. We have the family unification and other other articles here that conflicts with the states. Well, this is, these are some reasons that the states do not want to to, to lose the sovereignty and making its own policies to control the migration. Because it's better to, to leave to the countries to control the migration if, the, if, cannot, if they, these countries cannot accept more migrants and cannot protect their rights than to stop, uh, to control the borders and to stop and to protect the, 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 the rights of migrants they have already in their stand. There is the second reason why this convention will not be implemented, as other people will not be implemented, is the cost of the convention. The convention uh, gives to the, to the migrants uh, such rights as health care and health insurance. There are some countries in the world that cannot provide health insurance for its own nature, or its own citizens. And how will Greece, Spain, uh, Portugal, in an in in actual economic crisis, uh, provide this help? In the definition that the negative mention, the affirmative uh, said, they said that the, the ratified means to uh, implement all the articles of, of, of the convention. That, that's, that's impossible. That's why the states will fail doing this. That's why the, the migrants will not have the, the right uh, protection because of this. Uh, then the, the third reason why this, uh, this convention will, will fail is because uh, let, me, let me tell the history of how it, got, how, how it came with the convention. There was a, a, a cooperation between all the states uh, uh, before the, uh, 1990, 1990 uh, to have a document to protect these rights. But what happened? When the convention was drafted, there were only the states where, that were, uh, the migrants were coming, you know? Uh, then, uh, this, so this convention has been drafted by these, by these persons, by these uh, representatives of the states. And, and the states, uh, and the developed state then, uh, uh, did not accept to, to be a part of this convention. That's why these states, and the reason is because this convention conflicts with the policies of, of this, uh, on controlling the migration. This is, these are, uh, the, uh, and in the first, uh, in the first, um, uh, part of the convention is mentioned that to implement well and to enforce this convention, 
There is a need of cooperation between so it's, uh, uh, the countries that migration uh, uh, comes and the countries that are self migration. That will not happen because these developed countries did not accept to draft this convention because of the uh, because of the conflict of um, the policies, the their own policies. And why is this convention uh, is going to fail? Because it's too old. It was drafted in 1990, and now it's, we are in 2011. That means that we now the, the migrants are more and more, and the control of migrants uh, is getting worse. We call for the migrants need protection, but not by UN Convention, because that not, that's not going to guarantee that's going to fail. Thank you. I'm ready to go. You accepted the fact, in your actual first sentence, you accepted the fact that migrants need protection. Of course, they are people. Okay, why do they need protection? Do they have problems? Oh, of course, they have problems. Well, okay, if they have problems, why don't you want to change the status quo in order to get them rid of their problems? Because that's what they support. I'm, I'm a citizen in my own country, but I have problems in the education system. Is there a need for you as the police to, to uh, give me uh, some more rights and to protect me this way? Okay. Is migration unavoidable? Yes or no? Un unavoidable. Can you explain this because I don't get it? Will migrants, after all borders are closed, will migrants still exist? Of course, there are states that accept uh, migrants. They want to accept because there are so, gaps on labor. Please. But they but they, uh, but they, are making a, a, a good laws. There is Canada that okay, okay. 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 so, migrants are very good. So, if migration cannot be avoided yeah. in those countries, shouldn't we give them their rights because they need protected? Of course, there are nations and laws of the nations that have to provide these rights. Yes, why if they do, why do we still have a problem? And, I'm, and I'm, I, if you forgot, I mentioned that this is happening because the states, because the migration has been growing so fast and the, and the states did not have the, the power to control, but they are doing well in, in closing the borders and respecting these rights. Another question. If we were, when we created the Mahmoud Charter of Human Rights, if we were to know that Iran is not going to respect it, would we have thought? And if we know that this rod is going to implement, and we, we are afraid, and we, we know that the Greece Spain is not ready to ratify it completely, no, that's not about human rights. If human rights were not to be respected when they're uh, This is the reason why we call not to ratify a human convention, which uh, other human so rights are not being respected. We are, we are not against the human rights, but this document does not protect these rights. It's going to fail. That's the reason why I'm saying that. Okay. Basically, the, this discrepancies in this state owned policy, migration policy, lead to problems anywhere. Okay, are we agreed on this because we, we proved that the states are doing well of controlling immigration. We mentioned that the state that has the, the highest number of immigrant migrants, uh, migrants. It is USA who is doing uh, the enforcement of, of their own laws to protect these rights. Two big questions. One, or yes or no? If they accept the convention, will we have a protection of rights on an ideological level? Will we have a protection of rights? Uh, if we yes have no, a document with, yes or no. with hundreds of pages and hundreds of articles that the states cannot cannot provide these rights, that would fail. Okay, so you want to... no,
may not, this combination may not work perfectly. That doesn't mean it's not a chance to be taken. That doesn't mean in all countries it won't work. That doesn't mean that we will not, not have better international cooperation and uh, in conversion between governments when talking about migrants and immigration flows. Uh, first of all, I'm going to pass on to the proposition is a risk statement, and then I'm going to explain to you uh, on their ideas that they gave why exactly they are not going to stand at the end of this debate. First of all, the fact that they need protection. We agreed on that, ladies and gentlemen, and we, the proposition can raise faith this UN convention that does not conflict with what with the policy of the state because it's not mutually exclusive with what the state wants, with what the state has, with none of the states. Because let's look what who made this convention. The UN, ladies and gentlemen, the UN has almost all countries around the world, um, except Taiwan and Vatican, but that doesn't matter. It has almost all countries around the world that have different different ideas, different mentalities, and they're still meeting at General Assembly. And uh, um, my first speaker brought to you the fact that it's different from what we have. And why is it different? It's different, first of all, because it combines the, the conventions that already existed. And why is this good? Because some countries do not want to accept so many conventions, like the conventions from 1949, the conventions from 1975, and all other frameworks and stuff like that. But this combines every, every one of them and actually points out the fact that even immigrants have human rights, even migrants are human. And also, even the fact that immigrants have some rights and the right to information, which helps them improve and helps them enforce the rights that they already have. This is what the conventions make differently. The, the thing that the opposition team doesn't say anything about. Uh, most of all, the fact, the fact that they give an example of the fact that the, some countries already have their migration policy, like the United States, with, which deals with the immigrants very, in a very good way, or Canada, which also in a very good way. But ladies and gentlemen, if they actually can protect the immigrants, then that, that means that this convention won't change anything there. But they can still implement it to give an example for the international community and to help international cooperation between the states. Um, the most, uh, more, furthermore, furthermore, the fact that um, this was made by the UN and it has more credibility than the uh, ILO, for example. I already explained to you, and this was not rebuttal uh, by the opposition case, the fact that the UN has more credibility and is a uh, uh, supranational organization which can give more credibility to this convention than the ILO does. Um, further on, we gave you the fact that this UN convention brings a further a committee, uh, a thing that was not talking, uh, talked about by the opposition team. This committee actually is in the General Assembly, it brings forward the problems in the countries, like, for example, if we have a, a committee about human rights and we have, they're just showing the General Assembly that we have problems in Iran, ladies and gentlemen, we need to do something. If Iran won't ratify this UN, will ratify this UN convention, and we have problems, this committee will go into the General Assembly, they will say, we have problems, we need to act, we need to take action, and stuff will get, will, will get resolved, problems will, the problems will get resolved. Because today we still have problems. The committee, the committee that treats immigrants in that way in the General Assembly was not tried. Why shouldn't we try? Why does this bring disadvantages for the international community and for that country, ladies and gentlemen? We want the opposition to stand and to say this. The more, further on, we're saying that there are gaps between countries. And what we're saying is the fact that some countries, major receiving countries, don't want to accept the, this convention. But ladies and gentlemen, we're saying that they are guilty, the developed countries are guilty for the problems that the immigrants have because they do not support them. And we're saying that because they are developed, they can actually implement the UN Convention. And this is why, ladies and gentlemen, we're saying that this will help the better cooperation between the states and the better cooperation goes to uh, better enforcement. Um, further on, we're talking about this, uh, the, moving on to what they said, the fact that this convention will fail because the state loses their sovereignty. Ladies and gentlemen, this convention does not change your political system, your social your social stability, and anything like that. Because this only brings far further the rights that they, they are allowed to have. Most of, uh, further on, the problem of cost, ladies and gentlemen. Why, they, why do we want to talk about cost when we're talking about protection? Further on, you say that uh, countries that cannot give healthcare to people won't give to healthcare to, to immigrants. But let's face the fact that immigrants go to the best countries. And if they cannot do that, that doesn't mean we shouldn't try. And ladies and gentlemen, this motion stands.
your last words uh, about the cost. Yes. You say that these countries, even if, if cost has to uh, to ratify this you get a right? Yeah. How with the Greece does its uh, is a higher economic prices provide yeah. the whole uh, world those rights to the they have yeah. okay I understand what you're uh, saying. But the fact is that Greece because it also has a social security doesn't have that much migrants today. And you say that does not have the Greece much migrants there? They have immigrants there, but like I'm just saying that the fact that they cannot do some of those stuff, that doesn't mean they shouldn't ratify. Right. Because Are, do you stand from your definitions that you said that this convention should be ratified in all of the arguments? Yes, all the right. And why do you say why do you say that if they if they cannot uh, cannot do uh, something on uh, because of the cost, they can uh, do it later. I don't know about what to do later. I mean, you never say anything about that way they cannot do it. But they cannot provide health insurance. How can they do it? How can they provide health insurance? We're talking about health insurance. It's everywhere. No. The Greece is an economic crisis and cannot provide this health insurance to the, to the nation, to the natives. Too. How is this convention? Give this right to the migrants why the natives don't, don't have. The natives have the health insurance right, they have the right to come. I don't understand what exactly they're trying to do. Okay, you mentioned the committee. Yes. And you said that this committee will report to the UN. Yes. And what will the UN then do? Well, they will add, they will give sanctions, they will make it for decision matters. Okay, and why, what is Iran, Iran doing right now? What? What is Iran? Doing right now uh, after the sanctions? Iran? Iran. Iran is not doing very well. And how would the UN evolve these things? Well, they will. Well, actually, when we separate a country from the rest of the international community, they won't be well, so they will understand that they're doing something wrong, and they will try to fix it. Uh, you mentioned the idol conventions. Uh, where is, what is the need to have another convent, a convention after the evil of Pharaoh? Because the ILO didn't fail, the ILO wasn't accepted by how many countries? Country. How many countries ratified the ELO framework? Not all of them. About and them. why is that? Because they didn't want it, because there were too many made by the ILO. But and how do you, you want all the gay states to take this all these all responsibilities and not to let them do it? First of all, the national responsibilities. First, first of all, they already have the responsibility of the migrants and the them. And second of all, it's not such a big deal. Thank you. 
have to say that you failed.